everybody welcome back to the haven family farm thanks for joining me for the video today i'm going to apologize right away for number one all i have is my phone so the video just comes out so wobbly on the phone so i'm sorry but there is some great information in this video so i hope you'll keep watching anyway and the other thing is uh we're up on a hill and it's windy today so there may be some wind noise again i apologize for that but um let's get into the video here today you are looking at the remnants of my 40 foot by 80 foot tension fabric building i did some videos on this the snow brought this down for those new viewers who uh, have not seen that i'll try and put a few photos in of uh, when when it actually happened I haven't had time to clean it up. So I just wanted to talk in this video about tension fabric buildings in general. Are they a good investment? Should you buy one? What should you look for? What should you buy? So my experience with these types of buildings is fairly limited. However, uh, I do have another one of these buildings. I'm gonna turn you here so uh, that we're gonna take a look at. It's way down there. I've had that one now for about 13 years. So that one has been a great building and that's why I wasn't really afraid to buy another one, but they're two different manufacturers and two completely different styles of construction. And that is why one has survived and one has failed and why I think it's important to make this video so that if you want to buy one of these, you know some things to look for so you don't get into trouble like I did. So let's take a walk in here and we'll look at the other building later, the construction of it. But let's look at the construction of this building. So this building did have almost a peak to it. It wasn't like a rounded top. It, it came up and it did round a little bit, but it came to a peak at the top. And I like that because here in uh, northeastern Pennsylvania, we of course get snow, which is what brought the building down. And I wanted, I didn't want the the sort of crown on the top kind of ends up being like a flat spot almost. So I thought the peak would be better to, to get the snow off. So that was the, the first thing with the building is it did have a peak. It wasn't a rounded top. So let's look at the construction here a little bit here. So um, basically what it, what it is is big arches that get put together in many pieces to go all the way up and around. And then there's these horizontal pieces that come across to tie the arches together. So let's look a little closer here. And then they're just rebarred. This building was meant to sit on the ground. It came with galvanized rebar. This is what the bottom looks like here. So here's the big rebar that goes in the ground. Now you could put this on a concrete pad, but the building came with the hardware for the ground and I wasn't gonna spend the money on the concrete right now. Uh, this bracket here, was for a ratchet strap that held tension on the cover. But uh, basically you can see there's a galvanized plate here. And again, that's what holds it. So then you have your first connection here and that comes up to your second connection right here. So then those two pieces get hooked together, just two, two carriage bolts. It was really easy to put together, but I'm gonna tell you why the building failed. So if you look at the connection here between this horizontal support and this horizontal support, you'll see that and where it connects to the arch, the tube has been flattened in order to tighten a bolt down. Well, what happens when you flatten that tubing is it loses rigidity. So. We're gonna, I'll pan you down here a little bit so you can see how these arches are sort of waving in and out. You can see it right here from that one to that one. It's because of those flat spots on those tabs that it's allowed to do that. So when the building starts getting pressure on it or wind on it, those tabs immediately flex. And that is exactly what happened. Some, well, I'll back up for a second. So the cover. The cover, this building was up for about four years. So the cover was about four years old. It was already starting to get a few minor holes in it. I was 
going to either replace it or patch it for a few years. But what seemed to have happened between year three and year four is that when we hit year four in the winter, the snow, there's the, all that wind, sorry. The snow didn't want to slide off at all. I had to keep coming up here and kind of banging the snow off from the inside and then it would slide down. The first three years we had similar snowstorms. It cleaned itself off perfect. So it's almost like the cover sort of lost its sort of glossy waxy coating on the outside. So that was sort of the first thing that caused this failure, the snow not wanting to slide off. And then the second thing that caused the failure was those tabs that I showed you. So it allowed the building, instead of the building carrying itself all the way across. So we got snow buildup sort of on one end. And that part of the building was the first part that collapsed. You can see this piece came down. It was a little different. Some of this has already been taken apart. But what should have happened was if you get weight in one spot, the load should have been transferred across the arches. And that was impossible because of these tabs. And here's another great <clears throat> look at, there's some tabs here that are bent. And here's another one right here. You can see how this piece comes across horizontal and then that one starts going up in the air because it bent at the tabs. So when the weight started coming down, instead of it being transferred and all, a whole bunch of these arches carrying the load, all the weight ended up on a few arches. You know, what was there? One, two, three, four. You know, there was four main ones that ended up coming down and then it drugged the rest of the building with it after. This section over here was the worst. So do not, if you're in a heavy snow area, even the wind, the wind would kind of shake this building a little bit too. Same thing, because there's no support for those arches. You put those arches up and they would just kind of flop all over the place. The cover was really the only thing that stabilized the building. Now the other tension fabric building that we're gonna look at is constructed very differently from this one. So I would stay away from any building that uses these short pipes that go between the arches with the flat tabs. And I'm not gonna name any manufacturers because frankly, I've seen this exact building advertised under many different manufacturers. Uh, this one I bought in an auction. I got a, a good deal on it, but you know, it came back to bite me. Uh, the other building that I showed you earlier, I bought from Farm Tech um, and I paid a lot more for it, but obviously this is a perfect case. You get what you pay for. That building is still here, you know, 13 years later. This one made it not quite four years and here you go. So if for some reason you see one of these buildings and you're determined to buy one because you need cheap storage. What you can do, and I will show you in the other building, is you need to add extra horizontal braces to lock all these arches in. And that will significantly strengthen this building. Also, be mindful, again, the cover is only going to last about four years and then it's going to get holes in it. You can buy replacement covers. So if you get a good deal on a building, and you want to buy it anyway, be prepared to add extra bracing and in about three or four years, put a new cover on it. At that point, you'll have a good building. And that was sort of my intention with this one after I saw the holes and I saw how it shook. I just never got around to being able to make those changes before this happened. So I'm going to start taking this building further apart and uh, I'm not going to bother showing any of that. Nobody wants to see me taking bolts out and taking pieces out, whatever. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the remnants of the building. I've thought about making a smaller building out of it and buying a cover. I don't really know what I'm going to do. Uh, but uh, let's go and we'll look at the other building and I'll show you the type of construction that you want to have if you buy one of these. All right, guys, taking a break from the other building, taking that apart. And I thought I'd come down here and show you this one. This building is about 20 foot wide by 52 foot long. So let's show you the construction here. Uh, first of all, the metal pipes that make the arches are heavier metal, heavier gauge steel than the other building was. So right off the bat, you have that. Now, if you can kind of tell on camera, it's not completely flat on top, 
but it almost it almost kind of is right right across the top and that was sometimes snow sits on this building i've never had obviously the building's never collapsed it's never broken the cover or anything like that but because that always sat up there that's why i thought well if i got one with a peak on it instead of the arch uh you know it would slide the snow off so that's why i you know i went with that but looking at these arches um the second thing is they're closer together than the other building is or was these i believe are four foot and i the other ones were five foot apart so they're a whole foot closer together because yeah they are four foot because i can perfectly stack the center of a round four foot round bale there and one there this this building was perfect for that but anyway um so that's the second thing arches are closer together now the most important reason why this building holds together and the other one didn't and it's going to be a little little hard for you to tell because we used to have insulation on the building all the way around and so everything's kind of messy but i want to show you the connection here there's some old duct tape here because they had you put duct tape when you assembled the building so the cover didn't rub there's a brace that loops around and then there's a bolt that goes through here so that's what clamps this pipe to that one but you notice that right in this area there's some spray foam in the way here man that stuff sticks there so you can see as this horizontal pipe goes across and connects all the arches together it is not crimped down it stays at the correct diameter all the way across so it maintains its rigidity and that is absolutely the reason why when you get load on a building if one or two of these have a bunch of snow or a tree hits them or something because that is solid through there all of these are like that its neighbors basically can help it take the load whereas the other one had those tabs that would just bend and that was the end of it it wasn't transferring load anywhere so this style building is a much better construction than the other one so those are just some of the reasons why this building has made it so long and the other one hasn't again it was more expensive but the construction is way different and if you were to look for a tension fabric building unless again you want to do a bunch of work to a cheaper one just knowing that yes i'm going to have to do that work that's one thing but if you want to buy a quality one right out of the gate look for this style construction i'm sure there's lots of companies out there that have good construction of these so that's kind of the one style that i would recommend you look for so another thing to mention about this building i showed you earlier about the clamp that went around the pipes the horizontal pipes that go all the way around the building or from end to end there is no holes drilled in this building whatsoever so there are no points of weakness you know if you take a thin wall piece of tube like the other building and you drill a hole in it you have just created a weak point right through the center of it so this building does not have any holes drilled in it whatsoever everything is clamped everywhere there's an intersection of pipe on pipe it's all clamped so that really helps strengthen the building as well so anyway i hope this video was helpful to you thanks for watching this video questions comments down below i'll be happy to answer whatever i can i sure hope to see you guys on the next video thanks for watching